Hi, I'm Ryan Szymanski, curator for Battleship New Jersey Museum and Memorial. And today we've got another Pictures Worth a Thousand Words video. Uh, and in this one, because you guys just keep sending me gunfire porn, uh, we're finally going to look at a picture of the ship firing its guns. We're going to talk about uh, some of the features in there. I specifically chose this one because it's a nice uh, top view of the whole ship. And uh, so we can see a number of features in addition to the obvious uh, big glowy uh, fireballs. Let's get into that. Uh, just a reminder, if you guys have a picture of the ship that you want us to feature in a future uh, Pictures Worth a Thousand Words segment, it's not real easy to share those on YouTube, but there's a link in the description below to my Facebook page. If you head over to the Facebook page, uh, you can shoot me a message there, and uh, Facebook is just better about sending pictures. Please, dear God, do not just try and describe the picture with words. Uh, send me the picture in the highest resolution possible, and we'll add it to the list. All right, so uh, first thing looking at this picture, you can tell that it is the uh, 1980s commission. A couple of dead giveaways for that. You've got the tripod mast over the forward funnel that's only added in the 80s. Uh, you've got the missiles amidships for the uh, Tomahawk armored box launchers are pretty evident in this picture, as are the uh, port side harpoons, the phalanxes, all those 80s things are very evident. You can see that two of the five inch gun mounts have been removed. To take it a little bit further, you can tell that this is early 80s. Notice how the aft superstructure, where it comes in at an angle uh, it, it's going uh, parallel to the side of the ship and then it cuts in at an angle towards turret 3. That is specifically cut that way so turret 3 has the largest possible uh, field of fire. It can aim uh, about 270 degrees out of 360 degrees. So that, that cut in the superstructure is very intentional. You can also see it on the forward superstructure around turrets 1 and 2. Uh, anyway, that cut in the superstructure up on third deck where the tomahawks are, you notice there is very little walkway outside of the outermost armored box launcher. Later on in the 80s, they actually extend that part of the superstructure out several more feet. Uh, so on pictures, instead of seeing that thin black stripe next to the uh, armored box launcher, you, you get a much broader thing, and that helps with loading the tomahawks. At this point, only New Jersey has been reactivated, and uh, she hasn't even fired her tomahawks in anger yet. So um, she may not even have any on board during this deployment. She does not fire any uh, at the time when this picture is taken. Uh, so they might not have learned how difficult it is to reload. Now, this picture is taken in February of 84, when the ship is bombarding Syria. Uh, on this day, she fires 288 shells and zero Tomahawk cruise missiles. So that's one of the things that leads me to believe they aren't on board. Now, let's see. Uh, we know that this is New Jersey for a couple of reasons. Uh, one, the shape of the uppermost level of the superstructure. Now, you can't really see it that well in this picture because of um, how it blends in with the rest of the superstructure. So we know for another reason, the bow, you can see the two uh, circles forward of the breakwater. You've got the breakwater forward of turret one, then you've got two squares. Those are the hatches that lead down to forward berthing. And then forward of that, you've got two circles in the deck. Those are former 40 millimeter gun tubs. On New Jersey, you can still see the outline of them. On the other four, I or excuse me, on the other three Iowas, they are cut flush and the deck is replated over them, so you cannot see any evidence of those gun mounts. The other dead giveaway is the fantail. You notice how there's a strip down the center and around turret three that is wooden, and then along both sides of the ship is black. Actually, just recently got a question about that. Um, in the 1980s, the Navy did not remove the wooden deck from the fantail. 
that wood is our insulation. But it was badly rotten, and that fantail is about 12,000 square feet of teak. So the Navy didn't want to spend several million dollars to replace that. Remember, Lehman had both a time limit and a budget limit in reactivating these ships. So uh, they, they put a Band-Aid on it, and they figured, well, we can come back and fix it later. And they never had the money to come back and fix it. But uh, they just covered that with a rubberized coating, probably a roofing compound. So it's like a, a solid sheet of rubber that goes over it, and uh, that covers up the rotten wood so you can still roll shells and helicopters and boats over it. Each of the four Iowas has a different shape. Wisconsin uh, has hers completely redecked, so she's got none of that rubber. Missouri's entire fantail is covered in that rubber. Iowa has a, a slightly different shape, and then New Jersey has, has this one. Uh, so those are the two ways you can tell. Some other interesting features while we're looking at the fantail. If you look at the flight deck, you can see that angled approach, uh, the, the diagonal line painted across it. In our last Pictures Worth a Thousand Words video, the one we put out last week, and I'll link it in the description below, uh, we talked about how early in the 80s it's diagonal like that, later in the 80s it's a straight line up the center, uh, which is what the ship has now. So that's another way of telling it's early 80s. You'll notice that the uh, netting around the flight deck is also down. You can see it hanging over the side of the ship, which means they were doing flight operations, which makes sense. There's no helicopter on the ship. Where is this picture being taken from? It's probably the ship's helicopter. Another cool feature here is you see that there is something bright yellow behind turret three. That is probably the mule or the uh, deck gear or the tractor, however you want to call it, uh, that is the piece of equipment that can tow the helicopter and the ship's boats around the fantail. Uh, in this case, they're all either offloaded for combat or in flight, uh, so you don't see them there. But if you were going to fire the guns off the starboard uh, broadside like they are, and you've got the uh, helicopter on the flight deck, uh, you would probably roll that and the boat to the port side behind the turret. The battleships were primarily used for shore bombardment. If you were going into a surface fight, because of the much greater range of radars, you knew you were going into a surface fight ahead of time, so you could take the time to move things. But if you're doing shore bombardment, you're sailing lazily up the uh, coast, and you know that the coast is going to be on one side of the ship. So you can move those to one the other side, and be pretty confident that they're going to be safe there. Now, some other uh, fun features here. Ooh, okay. Uh, if you look at the main battery fire control director on top of the forward superstructure, you will notice that it is pointed to the broadside. If you look at the after main battery fire control director on the after uh, superstructure, you'll notice that that is still painted towards the fantail. So this tells us that they are not using spot two, the after director, they are using spot one. Not only are they just using spot one, uh, they're not even maintaining spot two in parallel. So they do fire 288 rounds. Uh, that means it is a very long day. So we might be seeing a situation in which only a part of the ship's crew is at general quarters, or they might have done enough training uh, that they decided that they weren't going to track with spot two. Oftentimes in the 80s when they did uh, fire missions, they would track with both just so both crews got uh, experience, even though they were only firing with one. Well, here they're, they're clearly only using the one. Another fun feature that you can see, this is not a full nine gun broadside. If you look at turret one, you'll see white smoke coming out of the left barrel, the forwardmost one. You'll see an orange flash coming out of the center barrel, and you'll see white smoke coming out of the right barrel. If you look at turret two, you see white smoke out of the front barrel, nothing out of the center barrel, and white smoke coming out of the right barrel. Center barrel of turret two was found to have a crack in it, 
so the rifling wouldn't function properly, and so the battleship uh, deployed without that gun barrel working. Why center barrel turret two? Because during the Vietnam War, they fired that barrel significantly more than any of the other ones. Because it was the centermost one on the ship, they would always fire the ranging shot, the first shot from that one, and then they would go to other barrels for follow-up shots. So that one ended up with the most shots, ended up with a crack in the liner. There's a link in the video below to our video on circumcising the main guns, if you were interested in why that crack occurred. And uh, so rather than spend the time and the money to replace that gun barrel, they just deployed the ship as quickly as possible to get her over to Beirut. Uh, and it looks like only the two outer barrels on turret three have fired, uh, although there's no evidence that the center barrel of turret three couldn't have been used. So this is at best an eight gun broadside. It looks like just a seven gun broadside. So I better know what's happening here. I noticed how turret 3's fireball is not quite as bright and well-developed as turret 1 and 2's. Notice also the uh, white ripples in the water are not quite as uh, distinct as the ones up forward. It looks like turret 3 has fired a little bit after turrets 1 and 2. All three barrels in a turret do not fire at the same time. If they fired at the exact same time, then the shells leaving the barrels next to each other uh, would force each other off of their course. You get what's called dispersion. So because they're leaving the barrel with so much force, uh, that force will then blow the, what is it, less than uh, something like eight or 10 feet between the gun barrels. And it'll push that other uh, shell off of course and could be wildly inaccurate. So you always fire left barrel, right barrel, center barrel in that order. Um, that is something that is mechanically timed into the firing of the guns. It's not something like there's somebody with a bunch of triggers and they're going in an order. So when you pull the triggers, all of the guns that are loaded will go off, but not simultaneously. There is a time delay of uh, about one third of a second between each of the barrels firing. And since our projectiles travel at 2,450 feet per second, uh, that gives you a third of a second. Uh, your projectile has gone about 300 yards out of the barrel before the next one fires. You get some evidence of this if you're looking at the white smoke around the uh, gun barrels. The white smoke from the left barrel has already started to blow away. The white smoke from the right barrel is still uh, a pretty solid cone as if it's just being ejected. And the center barrels do not have white smoke yet because they're just firing the projectile. So left barrel fired first. It's already had about two thirds of a second to blow away. Right barrel has fired and has had about a third of a second. And then we're seeing the center barrels of turret one and three just fire, uh, which is why you've got a little bit of an orange fireball coming out of turret one and a lot of black smoke coming out of uh, turret three. And then of course, remember turret two center barrel isn't working at all. So uh, now that we've talked about some of the cool features you can see, uh, another thing to point out, notice that there are no markings on top of the gun turret. The different Iowas had their different turret tops painted in different ways. Um, on New Jersey, our turret tops are the same haze gray as the sides of the ship. On some of the other Iowas like Missouri, the turret tops are painted deck blue while the sides are painted haze gray. Other Iowas uh, have different things painted on them. I believe Missouri has 63 painted on hers. And uh, Iowa has an American flag painted on her turret one. During the Vietnam War, New Jersey had a 62 painted on turret two. And at various times, a star painted on top of turret three. But in the 1980s, she never had any sort of indicator like that. If you come and visit the ship today, we have repainted the Vietnam era 62 on top of New Jersey's turret two as an homage 
to the Vietnam Commission, uh, but it is not appropriate to the ship in the 1980s and 90s when we're interpreting her. However, because we're interpreting the whole ship's career, we made the decision to put that on there. And it is something unique that uh, New Jersey gets. I believe she's the only one that ever has her number painted on turret two instead of turret one. Um, I suspect in the 1980s, New Jersey does not have the number painted and Missouri does. So if for some reason, both battleships are operating together and you're in, a, in an aircraft looking down, uh, you, you can tell no number New Jersey, number Missouri. If you're in the Atlantic, no number Wisconsin, American flag, Iowa. Uh, there's a whole tradition in the US Navy of painting the turret tops of uh, your battleship so that your aircraft, especially when you're doing gunfire spotting, can tell uh, which ship is theirs. It's also why aircraft carriers have the number written on the flight deck. Very difficult in a plane orbiting above to tell which one they're supposed to land on. Uh, anyway, I digress. Uh, now, the reason why you guys all want this video, oh my god, look at these uh, ripples that the 16-inch shells are causing. That is clear proof that it moves the ship sideways in the water. No, no. Iowa-class battleships do not move sideways in the water when the guns are fired. If you look at the bow of the ship, you will see some rippling. The ship usually maintains steerage while doing shore bombardment. She doesn't move fast, so it doesn't complicate the firing solution, but because there is a tide and um, other tidal flow acting on the ship, the ship usually will sail at, you know, maybe five knots, just enough to maintain steerage. And you can see ripples coming off of the bow of the ship until at least turret two. They're pretty small and dark, so obviously she's not moving fast. Uh, but that is the ship moving forward, not sideways. Also, uh, you, you see this concussion in the water. That is not the ship moving 10 feet sideways in the water like uh, some people claim, uh, some keyboard warriors are claiming. That is from the giant frickin' explosion breaking the surface tension of the water. An Iowa-class battleship weighs 57,500 tons, fully loaded, combat load, which is likely what this ship is at right now. You can't see much of the black blue, uh, boot topping at the waterline, so the ship is sitting pretty low in the water. She's fully loaded. And, I, granted, she's only firing an 8-gun broadside in this picture, but even firing a 9-gun broadside that is, at maximum, 10 tons that we're throwing out with 660 pounds of powder per shot. So things move because of an equal and opposite reaction. If you're throwing 10 tons out, that would move maybe 10 tons sideways, not 57,000 tons. There's such a huge disparity here. The water is pushing against the ship, causing resistance. Even if you put a battleship on frictionless ice, it would hardly move because of the massive weight of the ship. And that doesn't take into account that the guns recoil four feet into the ship. The recoil of the guns is not transmitted directly into the keel of the ship. That would be very bad for the ship if you did that. Instead, each one has a massive hydraulic recoil cylinder on the bottom and two counter battery cylinders on the top so that the barrel will absorb the force of the firing, recoil four feet into the ship, and then get pushed back into battery without, without, without transmitting the force of that explosion and all of that energy into the keel of the ship. These things are designed not to slide sideways in the water. An 860-foot waterline length and a 38 foot depth, that is a tremendous amount of water we would have to move sideways. And for a ship this size, we're basically just throwing spitballs. Otherwise, did you guys notice anything in this video that I might have missed? Let us know in the comments section down below. Uh, if you've got other videos you'd like me to talk about, feel free to uh, go down to my Facebook page there. 
there's a link in the description below. Um, now that we've done one of your one of your gun porn photographs, try and send me some of uh, other cool stuff going on on the ship. We probably won't do another firing one for a while. Otherwise, Battleship New Jersey receives operating support from the New Jersey Department of State, also from a number of other businesses and private individuals like yourselves. We really appreciate the support you guys have given us. There's a link in the description below if you'd like to continue supporting our museum and the YouTube channel. You can also support us by liking, sharing, and subscribing so more people find out about the museum. Thanks for watching.